Hey, this is Joseph Chambra from the Castro Street Fair in San Francisco, California. Right behind me, you can see the rainbow flag, which is at the corner of Castro and Market Street. I came down here in 1988 for the first time. I was uh, 18 years old. And, um, you know, nobody gets here and what I mean to hear, I mean to gay, gets to gay, or being gay, or thinking of gay, um, unless they've given a lot of thought. Nobody, you know, goes gay on a whim. Um, usually it's after a pretty long and torturous time of real suffering as a child. And, and a lot of um, people who suffer with same-sex attraction, even those who, who you know, leave the active life behind. I mean the active life, I mean um, being with people of the same sex, if they embrace chastity. A lot of them say, well, it's, it's nothing I chose. Um, but I would argue that getting here, I mean, for me, getting to the Castro and getting to gay uh, was after a series of, of actually many choices. Um, thinking about being with men, fantasizing about it, um, masturbating about it, looking at uh, gay porn. Um, those were a series of, of choices that I, I did make. Um, immature ones, of course, as, as a child, and a child that was, you know, fairly traumatized. Um, but still, um, there was, there was thought processes going on there. It wasn't just something that was thrust upon me where one day I just said, um, you know, this is what I was. It was, it was a process of, uh, of becoming gay. Um, a lot of people have a, a mark or a point where they say, well, this is where I really realized it or I came out. I mean, for me, it was in... Um, probably about the time I was maybe 15 or 16 and I was I was very very um, enraptured you could say or, or just in love with James Dean I thought he was just sort of the perfect man and um, I had re I read a book uh, a biography of him and it said he was bisexual and at that point I was like wow you know that's me um, he is that way when um, you know, in the in the '70s, the you know those who you had to look up to, I guess you could say, if you were a boy that maybe thought you were gay, or you know, leaning towards being gay or questioning yourself, were you know Jack Tripper, the character on Three's Company, um, the Village People, and uh, George Hamilton and Zora the Gay Blade, very camp characters. Um, so James Dean sort of represented a very sort of real guy to me. Um, and I would say that was the point, and a lot of people have those sort of moments. And that was my moment when I said, yes, you know, this is who I am. I am gay, or at that point, you know, I am bisexual. Um, that's the way I, I got to that point. And, um... But then it, it was still very sort of not real to me, I guess you could say. Um, because, you know, porn and masturbation and things can only take you so far and fantasize. Hey, this is the, the um, entrance to the Castro Street Theater here, famous here in the Castro District. Um, this was my home a lot of times when I was down here, when I lived here, um, when I was in the gay lifestyle. It was sort of my fantasy world, within a fantasy world of homosexuality and being gay. Um, here, especially certain films that really resonate with, with gay men, The Wizard of Oz. Um, Anything with Betty Davis, Joan Crawford, of course, uh, James Dean, Marilyn Monroe. These very larger-than-life 
personalities and, and characters. And um, it, they resonate so much with gay men is because it is such a fantasy. Um, and being gay is, is a fantasy. Um, there's really no such thing as gay. Because really gay is something, and I talked about earlier, it's, it's sort of a, a mindset or a resolution that we come to in our own head about what being attracted to men is about. Is it just about being attracted to men and having that to do with our childhood? We never connect it really as, as gay guys because it's just too painful to think about being abused or that we were neglected, that our, our fathers didn't love us or they, that our fathers abandoned us or didn't treat us well or that boys at school um, bullied us and, tra and terrorized us. We don't, we don't connect it. it it's, it's sort of bizarre. When you're in that life, you know, it's, it's like being in Alice in Wonderland. It's like being trapped in a weird reality that makes on sense. Castro Street, and we're looking down at Castro Street Fair, you have all kinds of celebrations like this, sort of quasi-religious, you know, festivals like this all the time in, in the gay life. It's really a way to sort of connect with something transcendent, with something godlike. Although very in a very base sort of degraded way, but it's it's sort of the only way that that um, they can do it. Um, I talked to so many guys today, and it's just being gay becomes sort of all encompassing. Um, it, it's sort of an end point. I am gay. Um, I am. Therefore, I am. And I just want to give something to them a little, a little different. Um, give something to them, an alternative that. Well, there is more, and there and there can be more than just just gay. There's more to life than than just being gay. And there's more to you than that. The party was enough for me for a long time, and just. The self-realization of being gay was enough for me. Uh, it was really all I needed. I had what they call, you know, self-acceptance. I wasn't ashamed of who I was or what I felt anymore. I just felt that that was who I was, how I was made, uh, that essentially I was, I was born that way, and that was just the way it was going to be. And um, it was just who I was. Um, and uh, I didn't have a problem with it. I didn't have a problem with being gay. And I didn't have a problem with uh, acting out and um, being with men, having sex with men, with whomever and whenever I wanted. It wasn't an issue for me at all. And, um, but it, you know, at one point, you know, things just started getting super, super dark and weird. You know, sex it wasn't just enough to be with a guy and to feel loved and to be held by him and to be affirmed by a man. And what I mean by sex getting weird is that, you know, in the beginning when you're a young boy like me, I was 18 years old, and, you know, you're with a man for the first time and it's not just about sex, which is, of course feels wonderful for everyone. Um, sex feels great for, you know, heterosexuals and homosexuals alike. Um, that's why everybody wants to do it. But um, when you're gay, it's, it's much more than that. It's, it's hard to explain. Why sex is, is more than just sex or pleasure. Uh, for gay men, it's because as a boy, you're always longing for that masculine affirmation that you didn't receive either from your father or from peers. So when you have sexual relations with a man, 
you suddenly have that. You have that with sex. You have both things at the same time. You have the sex act, which feels good physically, but you also have this sort of mental, emotional um, rush or resolution to all your childhood sort of freaking out about who am I, who am I, and you know why don't the other boys accept me, or why do I feel less than a man? All that seems to be resolved in in gay sex. It seems to be. That's the point. That's. That's the important part, it seems to be. And at one point I came to a place where just being with a man, just with one man, was, was really not enough for me. Um, I kept, you know, subconsciously, subconsciously, <laughs> um, I was delving into some weird stuff um, that had to do to, with my childhood. And I, I didn't realize I was doing this that I was delving into this stuff. Um, but, you know, I was, I was getting into bondage and discipline and very hardcore forms of sex that were really recreating what I went through as a child. I didn't get that. I didn't get it. Um, you know, it, it, was, it was buried what happened to me as a kid. But it was coming out. It was re-emerging in my sex life, in my twisted sick sex life. Um, and that's what happened. And um, so really gay, being gay, uh, you know, literally, you know, It's what I call a China syndrome, where it just eventually just melts down completely and, and it destroys itself. We Most saw that. fully took place with AIDS, um, where gay men sort of literally dissolved. You know, I, I saw that. Um, gay men just dissolving and, and dying. And then, but you see that sort of destruction and um, sort of implosion on a very personal level in individual gay men where, um, you know, I experienced that where you were young and things start out rather slow and you're, and you're groomed um, and you take things rather slowly and then the longer you're in the life, it becomes uh, sick and even you start realizing that um, because the, what happens is the trauma the rape or the abuse or the neglect, it, it manifests its, itself very physically in, in, the, in our choice of sex acts and what we do. Um, whether it's being with dominant men or being with um, very masculine men or large men or men um, that we perceive as being very manly because they have a large penis or because they are aggressive or rough with us sexually. Um, that's all points to something lacking within us, something hurt and something wounded um, very deeply. Uh, but, but it is, what is the tragedy, what is such the tragedy of, of gay is because they don't realize it is that um, what was so tragic was this, was this very, you know, quick slide into perversion for gay men, is that it wasn't malicious, it was, it, it was pointed inward, um, and they ended up, you know, killing themselves and, and dying, is what happened. And um, that was, was the tragedy, and that's still the tragedy of, of gay of what being gay means. It, it's just a tragedy. It, it's, it's locking yourself as into being a wounded, um, abused child forever, constantly seeking a man to love you, to make it all better. It's, it's a constant seeking of the daddy, the father, um, for gay men. That, that's, 
that's so it's just so sad and it, it doesn't have to be that way because you know when I got out I realized that um, and it wasn't quick it, it took a long long time I, I I slowly began to comprehend that I wasn't gay by any means um, I, I was abused child and I was a survivor of that um, and the way I had dealt with it as an adult was by acting out and being here uh, being here this is what I thought would make it all better this was what I thought would work clearly didn't but you know I did leave um, I left I left San Francisco for good and I don't just mean well I left a place I left a place in here um, I came to San Francisco looking to be gay and I left San Francisco looking to be something entirely different um, looking to be me looking to be Joe I wanted to be the person that I was born to be, and I just knew it wasn't gay. I, I just knew it because gay had been such a bomb. It had just been um, such a bust in every sense of the way. Uh, my friends had died with this gay brain and with this gay lie in their heads, with this gay fantasy. The fantasy of being gay was no more real than those movies I was watching down at the Castro Theater with James Dean. It, it just was fake. It was false. It wasn't real. There was nothing real about it. It was, it was imagination. It was cinematic. It was, it was crazy. Um, and I just knew that wasn't me anymore. And God just took me out of it. He took me out of here. He literally just took his hand and just lifted me out of this place. Just pulled me out of here. Just pulled me out of here. And I just never looked back. I just never wanted to be gay again. It never crossed my mind of being gay. Of, of thinking myself as gay. I just knew I was something else. Something different. Something better than that. Way better. You know what? You're better too. You are not gay. You are not born gay. This is something that happened to you later. Um, just, just look into your heart. Look into those dark places that you don't want to go. That are too painful. But you know what? That's exactly where you have to go. That's just it. You gotta get out of this place this place, this place, this place. Even if you're not in San Francisco, you can be in any other place, any other city. You just have to stop being gay. It's, it's just easy. Just tell yourself, I'm not gay. I'm not this thing. I'm me. I'm Joe. I'm whoever you are, okay? And I love you all. God bless you.